Hi, I'm your host Daniel Riley, and you're watching Palestine Studies TV. Today I'm speaking with Adam Mabel, director, cinematographer, and producer of the film Kalkilia, which tells the story about Sejid, a 30-year-old Palestinian, and his group of young Palestinian skateboarders, parkour enthusiasts, and beatboxers who all call themselves the X Games. طبعا انا ساجد ابو علي من كالكيلي طبعا فلسطين كالكيلي قلت لهم تعالوا شو رايكم اعمل طريق لانه اذا احنا ما بيناش او ما عرضناش حالنا في الشوارع 24 ساعه ما حد راح يهتم ما حد راح يسال ما حد راح يشوف شو احنا بنعمل بنسمي الطريق اكس جيم I need this in Kalkilia now! <laughs> now! Adam, the director, is a New York-based artist working with film, video, and photography, and has had his work featured internationally as well as domestically at the Galapagos Art Space, Rush Arts Gallery, Third Ward, Photoville, Broadway Gallery, and the Aronson Gallery at Parsons, the new school for design in New York City, and has recently had a solo show at the University of Michigan. Adam's work can be viewed at www.adamablestudio.com. Adam, thank you for staying down with us here at Palestine Studies TV. Um, so first, I'd like to ask you, how did you get involved in this project? I guess what led you to want to make a film about this young community um, of Palestinian skaters, uh, parkour enthusiasts, and hip-hop beatboxers? Um, I like to say that the project chose me as much as I chose it. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is um, in the fine arts. I do photographic and video installation work. And so I was working on a project in 2010 where I was exploring divisions of land um, that, uh, that divide land or people uh, that you could see from satellite photography. Mm -hmm. So I was using actually Google Earth and taking images and video and, um, and I developed an installation project called Terra Inferma. Mm -hmm. And so that allowed me to explore all over the world a variety of divisions that you could see from way up in the sky. And one of those places was Israel and Palestine. And actually one of the images that I used for the, for the piece mm -hmm. uh, was an image that you could see of Gaza separated by the wall through the middle and then Israel proper and um, and so I was interested in the uh, the aesthetic elements of these divisions and what kind of feelings would be derived from them by looking at them and since it was an installation it was about moving through them so there was surveillance video I was creating um, streaming online in real time uh, there was video projections and there were these photographs so uh, I realized that I was approaching this work very much from a distance, uh, literally. And so I needed to go to one of these places. Mm. And it wasn't a question of where I was going to go to, uh, I think, um, because I've been involved and uh, aware uh, about um, issues in the Middle East, and particularly about Palestine, uh, because my my cultural background uh, is, is Jewish, um, it, was, it was clear that I was going to explore uh, that area. And so I put a trip together in the spring of 2011 yeah. to do research. I brought a little bit of equipment and I went with my wife Layla um, and, uh, um, and then we also went with my stepmother who's of Palestinian descent, even though we don't like to use step in our family. She's uh, you know, she's uh, mom 2.0, <laughs> and um, and the three of us went for different kind of projects. Yeah. And when I was there, I had all these maps of the West Bank, uh, like uh, images that I had kind of played around with. Yeah. And I knew these places I wanted to go to, and one of them was Calculia. 
and if you look at Coquilia from the sky, it's 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 a very very powerful image with the wall wrapping around it. Yeah. Um, I always describe it that it looks like a tear. Mm. And so I, one of the people that I got connected with is a former uh, hip hop artist who um, runs uh, NGOs mm. in in the West Bank. He is he's from Janine. Um, he's Palestinian. And his name is Nizar Kabaha. And uh, I met, met with Nizar, he looked at my work. He goes, oh, you want to go to Calcilia? And I go, yeah, I'd love to go there, but I, I want to meet someone from there. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I have a friend I'll introduce you. I go, great, what does he do? He's a skater. <laughs> so serendipity is, is how the project chose me. And MAPS was a key kind of path for me to discover you know, both Palestine and particularly Calcilia. Were you surprised that there were skaters in Calcilia? Initially, yes. Within, tw within 24, 40 hours, however it was long that it took for me to meet the, the group, I realized, why should I be surprised? And why was I surprised? Why, why wouldn't there be skaters in Palestine or in places all over the world? Mm -hmm. And that's the place from which I wanted to make this film. Basically to tell a story about normal people doing pretty much things that everybody else around the world might enjoy. Yes, and I wanted people to have that same experience that I had yeah. of approaching a film where they maybe are interested in the film because of like, wait a minute, are you telling me there are skaters in Palestine? I want to see this film. Mm -hmm. And then my hope is that when they watch the film, they get to go through that transition that I went through. Because from that, I think, opens up a lot of closed doors to narratives, mm -hmm. uh, particularly entrenched narratives, yeah. um, that I think frees us. It's not just about freeing, I, and that's not just about freeing the kids or freeing Palestinians. Mm -hmm. I think we have to free ourselves from the closed doors that surround us in order to reach and understand them. And I, I believe that that is a real path for, for change. Alright, so what inspired you to do this film? Um, so, after Muhammad and Layla and I met Sajid for the first time, he showed us these videos. Immediately we wanted to meet with the whole group. Mm -hmm. So I think it may have been the next evening, we coordinated uh, that they were going to do one of their practice sessions. And usually their practice sessions, in order to be on the street, mm -hmm. that has to be late at night, and it has to be in some kind of corner. Uh, and the particular space that they sometimes would practice in mm -hmm. is right in front of the Calculia Zoo. It's the only zoo in the West Bank. And so the first off, the irony of arriving at like 9 30, 10 o'clock at night in front of a zoo, you know, in front of all these animals that are in cages in a city that's in a cage, mm -hmm. right off the bat was both ironic and horrible all at the same time. And there's no like beginning of them starting. Mm -hmm. it, it's like you just parachute into this world when you get inaugurated into the environment of this team. And so, you know, Sajid had some cones lined up and was doing tricks through cones on his skates over here. There was uh, kind of a, a wall in a building, like over there, and the parkour guys were running it, up, running up it, and jumping off the wall and doing all these flips. And then off in the corner was a little huddle of uh, beatboxers and hip hop artists with cell phones on speakerphone, mm -hmm. blasting out the tune, and then you know rhyming and doing their beats together. All of this happens at the same time. And it's like, I always refer to it as street ballet. Mm. And what just blew my mind is that this community is surrounded by these walls. And they're literally surrounded by walls in front of a zoo. And my, you know, appreciation of a wall is you basically have two options. You can try to ram through it or run the other way. Mm -hmm. And what they have taught me is that you can use the walls around them very much like parkour and use them as launching pads to propel in a new direction. 
And when I discovered that in that moment in front of the zoo, basically at like, eventually it was midnight and one in the morning that we were still there. That's when I was inspired to, to make this story. How has um, this community been affected, though, by the, the wall that Israel has built around their village? How has the occupation itself directly affected them? Particularly with this community, yeah. we had a scene uh, where the, the group was invited to a really amazing performance, um, uh, like parade and show in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And so we get on a bus, the whole team gets on a bus, and we go to Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem was, I guess it's about two and a half hours away from Calcilia. It's a distance. Yeah. I would say a good percentage of these guys had never been to Bethlehem. They'd never been that far before. Yeah. So, first off, there's that element. The idea that they've never traveled to Bethlehem before. They've never traveled that far. Yeah. Um, and, and... The second part is that about five kids on the bus left their IDs mm. at home. And we're getting to the edge of the Calcilia, the entrance or exit of Calcilia, and all of a sudden Saja turns and goes, everybody make sure you have your IDs. And five kids all of a sudden murmur to each other, and Saja finds out five kids don't have IDs. And he flips out. He freaks out. And he, he's screaming, how could you leave your IDs at home? Well, the idea of distance, the idea of space, the idea of how far Bethlehem is, is mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's, they're so used to being contained. They're so used to being just wrapped inside that community that they left their IDs at home. And then Saja is saying, do you realize we're going through one of the toughest checkpoints in the entire West Bank? And we have to turn around, and the kids have to go out to get their IDs. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so for for me, it's those at least moments in the film like that that I don't want to explain what the occupation is. I yeah. think that's for other um, venues mm -hmm. and and other works of art or other works of uh, writing and. Um, but it's an opportunity for me to put a viewer in a room to experience it like they experience it. I guess, what do you want the world to know about Palestine, especially from your film, uh, this film telling the, their story, I guess? So the audience that I would like to reach with this film mm -hmm. is an audience of young, uh, either youth or young adults in the, the West, particularly the United States that either uh, participate in all these activities um, or are interested and follow them. And that they, many of them probably do not understand what's happening mm -hmm. in the West Bank, uh, particularly in the skate world. It's a very apolitical uh, environment. And, and so my, what I want to do is show them that these Palestinians are just like them, except they live in an environment that's completely different from theirs. And so it's about, it's a universal story. Uh, I think anybody will be able to connect to this story. It's about a group of youth who are looking for a space to play. And in, in that story, I'm not going to tell you about the occupation. I'm going to put you in the room, in the space of this group, and let them show you what it's like for them to live their lives. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for this interview, and uh, it's great having you here. At great. Palestine Studies TV. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Yeah. To find out more about the film called Kelly and how you can help fund its post-production, you can visit the website www.kalkeliathefilm.com. Thank you for watching Palestine Studies TV.